I'm Sivan Adams. This is the Bird Tales, episode three. One of the things that I really want to talk about in this whole vlog series is that you're not going to see me hunt private property. I pretty much hunt public land. Uh, the only private property that I hunt is the private property that I live on. Um, I try to shoot one rooster a year off of our land. But one of the great things about where I live in Minnesota is that uh, I'm right on the edge of the forest and the prairie. In fact, Todd County slogan is where the forest meets the prairie. So it's a great place to live in that aspect, but I also have the ability to drive northeast anywhere from 15 minutes to half an hour and be in really good grouse forest habitat. And even better, I have the ability to walk from my house. There goes a six pack of wood ducks and uh, walk right onto this wildlife management area, which I usually shoot a few pheasants on every year. I'm sure I'll talk more about public lands in the future because they mean a lot to me. This one is very important to me. Not just because I live, there's a whole pile of ducks going down in there right now. Anyway, so let's see, episode three. Right now I am on a wildlife management area in Morrison County. The cover in there looked great. About an eight year old clear cut young popple trees. Not one bird. So that wasn't all that interesting. I know that. I don't want this to be one of those things where it's like, yeah, he just goes out and shoots birds every single time. Because that's obviously not the case. There are plenty of nights I go out and get nothing. So over the weekend, myself, Jared, and a few friends uh, went up to the Paul Bunyan State Forest in Nevis, Minnesota to do a little camping and hunting and four-wheeler riding and just all around goofiness. So the first hunt that we went on, we get there, we get off our four-wheelers, we're standing around talking, looking at each other's guns, whatnot, and Remnar had wandered off. I don't know how long he had already been on point before we actually walked in there. The first two flushed, third one flushed, I got a shot off. He was pointing three grouse that were probably 20 yards from where we were standing and talking that whole entire time. Seriously, right there this whole time, and Remy's been on point for how long? I got a hopeful shot off, but he was kind of out of range. And, and we didn't notice this, but that bird didn't go very far. I just happened to think back on a bird a couple episodes ago that had mocked me from up in a tree, and I looked up into the branches and I could see this grouse sitting there. One of our friends had never shot a grouse before, and we were all kind of anxious to get on the board and make sure that we, we didn't get skunked for the day. Uh, so I called him over and had him shoot that bird out of the tree. Come here, come here. Good boy. Then there was the woodcock. Uh, Remnar went on point over by Jared, and I didn't get to Remnar before Jared found him, and Jared flushed the woodcock and shot it. So we walked around the ways, um, and Remnar was off to my right somewhere um, in some thicket, and uh, a grouse. I just happened to stumble upon it. It was sitting in the crotch of a tree. Flew out in the wide open. I got a good shot on it. Uh, that, so that was pretty exciting. And then this crazy kamikaze woodcock just came out of nowhere. Such a good opportunity that you you just have an abundance of confidence and you go, I'm gonna shoot this bird. I miss that shot all the time. But when there's that bird that's just like on the fringe, catch it out of the corner of your eye right as it's about to go into a thicket and you just da, da, da. I hit that bird all the time. Well this woodcock was that like, oh he just landed five feet from me and then flew straight away from me down the path and I missed him twice. I, I can't explain it. I'm off again to chase some more birds and uh, Remy's been doing pretty good. I'm happy. So I went hunting that evening and didn't even flush a grouse. 
for the first couple hours. And I didn't bother to mess with the camera because I figured it was full, but it would just keep overlapping because that's what they always do. When I did this interview, I thought that it had overlapped. Apparently it hadn't. It just got to where the card was full and shut off. I got a big smile on my face. We walked to the north of our campground and we walked mile after mile after mile and never flushed a grouse. And then we came back to the campground and where we were camped this whole time, I kept thinking, you know, that looks like a, a good little clear cut there. I walked up into that clear cut and right away Remnar flushed a grouse. And then it flutter, flutter, stop. It flushed again. It obviously saw me coming or saw Remy coming and I made a shot and actually hit it. And it was a pretty nice big bird. I'm sitting there trying to get this camera out so I can do my little interview spiel and uh, Remnar goes in po on point right in front of me. I walk up to him and I can see the grouse off to his left sitting on a, on a branch. And I just got a couple steps forward and the bird flushed, I shot it. Remnar found it and brought it back. Oh, that was an awesome, awesome end to the night. So then later in the middle of the week, I was out on a WMA rough grouse hunting again. Well, I'm on a wildlife management area in Todd County. I just finished up a recording for episode two, which you may have seen. Daisy just flushed a grouse on the edge of this wetland and I wouldn't have been able to shoot it if I would have had a shot, but I barely saw it, so I don't think it would have made a difference. Uh, but I'm going to make this intro brief because I'm going to get on the hunt here. Yuck. I am happy, happy, happy. I sat down back there to do a little interview thing like this, talk about how frustrated I was, because this woods has just been miserable to walk through. And I saw some bow hunters when I stopped originally, so I, uh, so I kept walking. And uh, we flushed the grouse just a little bit later, and I didn't get a very good shot. My, this was under my thumb. I, could, I just couldn't get a good grip on my gun. And I thought I kind of, I saw the bird teeter a little bit. So we just followed up, got on this side, Daisy flushed it. I hit it really good. I don't know what you're going to be able to see on the video, but it was like a trail of feathers all the way down to where the bird oh. fell. Uh, and it is a really nice, great big grouse. Nice tail on it. I'm very, very happy. That was a pretty good hunt. Shot the one bird, shot at a couple others and missed them. Um, as few leaves as it looks like there are on the trees, there's still quite a few leaves on the trees, but this is gonna be my last rough grouse hunt for a while. Minnesota's pheasant opener is in two days. And I'm gonna be in the field chasing pheasants for a while, letting the scratches on my arms heal, avoiding the ticks. I'll probably do a few more rough grouse hunts this year. I got one sharp tail hunt planned, but it's going to be mostly pheasants. All right, that's it. I'm going to the car. I have been out pheasant hunting, and we have had a very good opener. We didn't shoot a ton of birds, but who did shoot birds was the best part of the hunt, and it's going to be very memorable for me. But it's getting pretty dark now, and I don't have anything more to say. So thank you for watching. Good night.